Carl and Damon here from Games, Brains and Headbang Live, GBHBL.com for sure, and it's They Made What into a TV series. Yes, we are returning to this segment, covering one whole series in one whole video, because it's only four episodes long, which made it very, very simple to do. It is, of course, you've seen the title, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, the American-Japanese horror action CGI original net animation miniseries based on the Resident Evil franchise by Capcom. You know Resident Evil, you know what we're talking about here. The series stars Resident Evil 2, two protagonists, Leon Kennedy, S. Kennedy, can't forget the S, yep. and Claire Redfield. Produced by TMS Entertainment and animated by Cubeco, Infinite Darkness was released on July 8th, 2021 on Netflix. That's why this has got a lot more attention. Now, when this was released, I remember there being a bit of buzz around this. Because, as I now understand, there was a lot of buzz around Resident Evil in 2021 it was this the upcoming uh live action series about wesker and his daughters or something i don't know a lot of details about that and of course the incoming release of welcome to raccoon city it's 2022 what do we now know we now know the much vaunted much excited welcome to raccoon city is shit yep. it's a bad movie go check out go read our review on the site about it just read anyone's review. Universally panned for very good reason. Yeah. We saw it. We will talk about it in a video in the future, in depth, of course. But simply to put, we had a miserable time. We couldn't believe how bad it was. Extremely disappointing. Absolutely. So the shine's already off. Um, so when this with Infinite Darkness, it's already been kind of pushed and forgotten about. Particularly as it's just Resident Evil, it's just CG. And dare I say, you need to know the games to watch this. Yes. Which is a problem. That is a problem. Mm -hmm. you, you, it's, not, it's not accessible to anyone. But we'll get into it a little bit. First, the cast. Leon S. Kennedy, voiced by Nick uh, Apostolodes. I'm saying that name right. <laughs> Claire Redfield, Stephanie Panicello, Jason Ray Chase, Shen Mei, Joanne Zhao, and Wilson Doug Stone. These are the major characters I've pulled out of this. So, uh, let's... Oh, all right, we've got two, well, we've got two different views on this. I've been keeping it quiet for my. I didn't like this. Oh man! Really? Yeah, I, I did not like this. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by that. I found it to be bland. I found it to be boring. I found it to be so Resident Evil by the numbers that by the end I was so just like, okay, you've, you, you've done it, you've done it, you've done it. But what was interesting, you'd already told me that you liked it. Yeah, I, 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 I was very impressed. I, 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 admittedly, the first ten minutes of it, I was, I was saying, like, what, what the hell is this? Like, what, what am I watching? Mm -hmm. I, I, I had to actually leave and actually read the credits because I thought this ain't Resident Evil. Okay. And then it, when I realised it was based after like number f around number five, you know, based on the B S A A yep. where it is, yep. and, and then, then I understood more. But I, I, I really, I mean, obviously, there's, there's parts I didn't, which I thought were a bit crap the way, of the way they when when Jason turned into his big thing and uh, and. That wasn't impressive, but I, I liked it. You know, I, I thought I thought Leon was was, was quite clever. I, I like uh, Claire's part in it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Okay, good. I mean, I'm glad you did. I'm yeah. actually glad. I wish I did as well. Mm -hmm. I did enjoy parts of it, but we'll get into a little bit about that. You've already said it. This is set between the events of Resident Evil Four and Resident Evil Five, taking place in 2006. So there's a problem straight away. Oh, great. Set then. Yeah. That's not that interesting because you're like, okay, you're going to be messing around with the that side of things. And it's already like, okay, well, you're off to a bad start because like, how do you, ex how is that accessible to people who haven't played those? I would have preferred if, uh, I mean, when you tell me about this TV series and, and, and they'll make it up, I, I thought, okay, cool. They're going to start from the, from, from, from the very beginning. Oh, right. That's what I thought, not in the middle. Right. And obviously, now that I've found out that, that, that they probably ain't going to be another season, that is, that this is it. I mean, I, I'm still hoping that they might, they might make more, but I doubt it. But yeah. No, no, I mean, uh, I don't know, it's hard to know. It's, I can't say whether they will or won't. Mm. Because this isn't the first rodeo with CGI yeah. um, Resident Evil. Of course, you've had a handful of movies that have done this exact same thing. Yeah. Which is why this series baffled me so much. Is why Netflix were like, yeah, well, well, we'll, we'll take it. Mm. Huh? Why? It's because they thought Resident Evil was about to blow up again. Yeah. It begins in the year 2000, as a US helicopter is shot down in the country of... P P Penimus... Penimistan. I can't see yeah, pam, 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 yeah. I, can, I couldn't say it. Yeah, I kept yeah. saying it. Penimistan. Oh, am I going to be able to say that correctly? Penimistan. Because it comes up a lot. Yeah, it's pa oh, 
it, 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 it's, it, it's a hard one. So, Panam Stan, Panam Stan, Panam Stan. There it is, Panam Stan. Yeah, Am Stan. Do that part, then yeah. you get the pen. The other team in the other helicopter, the Mad Dogs unit, disobey orders to go and rescue the Dan Copter's crew who are under attack from locals. The rescue mission fails, though, and we see what I thought was them strung up, mutilated and being set on fire, but not before one opens his, his eyes. Zombie? Yep. And I was like, okay, very dark opening, but I was like, the CJ looks really good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually thought Chris was in the helicopter. Oh, okay, I I right. Well, like, one of these has got to be Chris. Right, okay. Yeah, I thought it looked really, really good, like CG-wise and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And the sort of like initial start, I'm like, okay, this is quite interesting. This is, I can see how this might tie into Resident Evil 5. Back in Panamstan, but in 2006, we meet Claire, who's working as an aid worker. We find out that the country has been torn apart by a civil war. Claire interacts with a mute boy and notices drawings are very reminiscent of zombies and B.O.W.s. At the White House, a couple of agents have gathered awaiting Leon. The other three discuss Leon's accomplishments and we find out that one of the agents is considered to be a hero of Panam Stan and he's named Jason and they are taken to the president. Leon, super important, is arriving in a helicopter as we find out that someone apparently tried to hack the White House files and it appears to be an inside job but they have no suspects. Get used to this stuff. There's a dry political tone to this yeah, yeah. that kind of works and doesn't work for me. I don't mind it because it creates a bit more of the world of Resident Evil. That The problem is, is the world they're creating here just reminds me of Resident Evil 5 and 6. Mm. And in particularly 6, where I'm like, okay, they went did the whole thing about it being worldwide. Yeah, I didn't enjoy that. We didn't like Resident Evil 6 for that. I mean, I, I don't know if you, if you mentioned it, but I, I like the fact that where the other agents are talking about Basically, how's Leon so good for? And obviously, then they mentioned the fact that he rescued the president's daughter. Right, yeah, they do actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you see a picture of Ashley in the yeah, president's yeah. Um, uh, office as. That's why, um, that's why he's like one of the president's main, yeah. main men now. Yeah, it would make sense, of yeah. course. So basically, the agents are being tasked with finding out who was the hacker. And the Secretary of Defense accuses China of being involved. And then the lights go out and Wait, a single so. gunshot is heard. Yeah, poor China. China's right, it's, it's, kicking it's, it's always China, man. Yeah. In the Oval Office. The president is being protected as one of the agents goes to look. He comes across a man staggering in a corridor, seemingly hurt. He says he got hit from behind and is hurt. He then collapses before turning into a zombie. The agent is attacked, forced to defend himself, but Leon arrives to save him, shooting the zombie in the head, telling him to shoot them in the head. Um, I didn't mind this. The sort I, of I start like of the zombie it. outbreak in the White House. Yeah. Little reminiscent of Resident Evil 6, though, yeah. with Leon's part at the start. They get the president to his bunker and we find out that one of the agents is called Shen Mei. As she and Leon go off with Jason to deal with the zombies. Zombies everywhere, basically. Yep. It's dark. It's a dark set of sequences. Um, but it has got good horror vibes. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not disliking it. I like the flash of the guns yeah, yeah. and what you see with that flash. Yep. That's kind of cool. Backup ends up arriving and then we cut some time later with the problem seemingly you haven't been dealt with. Jason and Leon discuss what occurred as we see Claire arriving at the White House to have a meeting with someone who was turned into a zombie, basically. She's fobbed off, like, obviously, of course. before she sees Leon. She tells him why she's here and shows him the picture she took from the boy. She believes the Civil War is a cover for an outbreak. But Leon has to go and he sort of says his goodbye. Um, I can't understand why Claire was allowed into the White House. Like, I know she's not in the White House, White House, and she's like probably... Like is a in, in like in a, but like what what's important about her? She's an aid worker. Yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't get explained. But obviously, no. I, I mean, she, she might have, she might have connections. Who knows? But I mean, it doesn't. Uh, it, it it's hard to judge what their relationship is because obviously, have they seen? Is this the first time they've seen each other since the, since number two? Yeah, I believe that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I mean, I, I like the fact that she comments on the fact that he looks different. About, yeah, yeah, about him not looking good in the suits. Yeah, suit, yeah. suit, 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 suit yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, because think about it, because the events of the games, there was no crossover for Clara Leon. No. Yeah. If she was doing Code Veronica, he was doing four. Mm -hmm. In the Oval Office, they have found that the hack was looking at files on a bio-research facility in Shanghai. So Jason, Shen Mei, and Leon are sent on a covert mission in a submarine to infiltrate Chinese waters and, uh, yeah, find out yep. what's going on. Basically, they're blaming China. Uh, Jason is the one in command and when Leon pushes him for information and is told that the information is classified over and over again, he's not a happy bunny about this. 
Leon does, Leon does notice Jason has injected himself with something before we flash back to what happened in Panamstan, where the soldiers reanimated and attacked the locals. So we do this a lot where we're jumping back to the events of Panamstan yeah. and events of now. At first, it's really jarring. I find it really jarring because I could not understand. Because the problem with CG, with characters, it's harder to recognise who they are. Yes. Particularly when we see Jason now, but Jason in the Panamstan thing has a helmet on constantly. Yeah, it's tiring. <clears throat> so I couldn't work out who the fuck he was. And obviously with him injecting himself with something, our suspicion meter goes off the radar and it's like, well, well, something's odd there. That's episode one. Yep. That's it. It's basically predominantly set up with that zombie outbreak in the White House. Uh, next one, we flash back to an earlier time as we see Jason apparently arriving to someone's house. I thought he was arriving home yep. originally, but then I would later find it it's not. Uh, he goes inside and seems to find something horrific. Mm -hmm. Enough for him to drop his bag of injecty stuff. He's then woken up in a sub by Leon, who asks if he wants to talk about it, which, obviously, manly men. Of course. We don't want to talk about that sort of stuff. We then see Claire staying at a motel and trying to investigate what happened in Panamstan. She has gone from, this kid drew a drawing, to, I'm now convinced something went on here. Yeah. It's a big fucking leap, Damon. I struggle with this one. It's a big leap, but I can't, I, 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 my only defence for that is the fact that after everything she's been through, and they've been through, if she's, they, I don't know, paranoid. Okay. No, I can buy yeah. it. You're right. You're right. You've been through so much. Uh, any kind of warning sign you're going to take seriously. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Uh, the argument seems to be raging as to why America got involved in Panam Stan. According to Claire's research, the Mad Dog survived and were greeted as heroes. Over the years since, though, each member has died via suicide, except for Jason and one other. Okay, I was intrigued by that. Yeah. So, okay, that's quite clever. We then cut back to Mad Dogs. Attempt the rescue of fallen comrades again. This time we see what happened after the rocket launcher went off. They picked themselves up and dragged an injured soldier into a nearby building. They held a position as night began to fall but couldn't raise anyone in the radio. We then cut to some time later and it appears as though they had to fight off some BOWs en route to base. And the guy they rescued has reanimated in a body bag. Shen Mei, who was just a low level soldier, then walks in. Very confused at this stage. Yeah. I was baffled. I was like, what the fuck's going on? I can't work out what timeline I'm in, who's doing what, why they're all here. Yeah, obviously it, it, it does explain it, explain this. But at the time, yeah, it's, it's like backs and forwards. Eventually it will explain itself. You're yeah. right. Absolutely. On the sub, she was reflecting on the past and she looks at the picture in a locket for a man she calls Gen C. The sub enters Chinese water stealthily, but problems are about to happen. Jason tells Leon about his nightmare, a real canon nightmare about Panam Stan. Leon then tells him about his time in Raccoon City, and I'm like, oh, I want to see that instead. And they bond over their shared trauma. They, they then argue about the decision to destroy the city and get into detail about fear and its effect on humanity. I quite like that part. Uh, I, 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 I did until the ending. Well, I, I, the I, problem I, is that what happens after regarding yeah. that. Because initially, I'm like, yeah, I don't mind the idea of the discussion. Yeah. I like the fact that they're, 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 they're talking about their past and the, the things that they've both done. Yeah. But yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously, before that, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. And their pontificating is ended by a sudden jolt knocking them off their feet. Alarms begin to sound as Leon and Jason find dead crew members. They have been attacked by some sort of wild animal. They can't use guns either because they're in a submarine. Leon and Jason begin to look around, the latter meeting up with Shen Mei and then killing. Shen Mei and him kill several members of the crew. And I'm like, oh, okay. That was unexpected. Didn't expect that, did you? I did it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, 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 you were suspicious. Yeah, it was, it was a bit shady. Okay. Leon, on his own, finds more dead crew members, one of which his stomach begins to move. And out of it comes an infected rat. He kills it, but of course, there are lots, lots more. As he makes his escape, the sub is set for self-destruction. I laughed, man. I was like, fucking Resident Evil. Yeah, it's the self-destruct system has been... You know, they can't help themselves. Maybe they have to do it. <laughs> he has little time... And it ends up in a corridor filled with infected rats. Do like the shot of this. Yeah. Nice CGI. Very scary too, man. If, if, you're, if you're in that situation, that yeah. very, very scary. Yeah, yeah. I've actually seen a few horrors and read a few horror books about rats. They can be quite quite scary. He, what he ends up doing is busting a water pipe and then electrifying the water to kill them. All before making his way to an escape pod where Jason and Shen Mei are. They let him in and escape the sub as it explodes. Yep, fair enough. At the White House, the president is informed about the destruction and it is blamed on a nearby Chinese fleet. Leave the Chinese alone, man. Exactly. 
In Shanghai, though, the three agents have made it to a safe house. Inside, they retool up and then reveal to Leon that they're actually working together to uncover what the US government did in Penan Stan, in particular the Defense Secretary Wilson. I thought your natural expression is, oh, well, Leon's going to be like, yeah, I want to help you guys. You are good guys, right? Nope. He is not game for this at all. I'm in two minds to this part. Right, okay, go okay. on. First, my first initial thought was like, seriously, Leon, really? After everything you've been through, from Resident Evil 2 to Resident Evil 4, yep. what, why are you, did these guys want to bring down the people who are doing this? Yep. So why are you against it? Then, then my second thought was, well, okay, these guys are saying they're the good guys, so why would you murder an entire, you, you murder an entire crew yep. of innocent people? That's right. Innocent people. So that, that, that was my second thought. And then I thought, then my third thought was that, well, Leon's, Leon's always been the good guy. Yep. You know, so he's not going to betray the president yep. for two people who, who could potentially be working with Umbrella or, or whatever. Yep. So. It is not worried, he's not considering the yep. idea that it's it's a deep uh, US government issue. Yep, exactly. Although it has its problems, do you know what I mean? So he's not impressed, he even calls them treasonous. Um, and Jason sort of tries to remind him, look, they always end up covering stuff up, just look at Raccoon City, but Leon still refuses to help. Mm -hmm. Resulting in them both going for guns. But Leon is just that second faster. Shooting Jason dead. Yeah. I mean, we both knew he was not going to be dead. Well, but I, I like the way that the, the fact that he, it looked like he was going to go for his gun. But he actually went for the fag. Put the fag out Yeah. Oh, what? The so, initial yeah, conversation. It was, sort of like, yeah. you know, it was like a, a standoff. Between like, them. Almost like a trust thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Shen Mei does manage to escape, though. Episode three. We're back with Claire as she has arrived at an isolated house in the dark. She tries to handle and finds it open, so wanders in. Inside, she finds a picture in a frame of the Mad Dogs before she is startled by a bird. Bird! <laughs> she continues to look around, stepping on a vial, one similar to what Jason's been using, so these vials keep popping up. And she then finds the body of a man who appears to have blown his own head off with a shotgun. So that's who she's looking for, the other member of the Mad Dog, who appears to have committed suicide as well. Elsewhere, this is where I think the series starts to properly drag. Shen Mei arrives at a big, expensive-looking house that has been fo and but has been followed by Leon. So she's got that Leon has followed her. Fair enough. This is Shen Mei's grandfather's house. Shen Mei greets her grandfather in a room with someone on life support, but Leon immediately busts him with a hostage and points a gun at the ball, demanding answers. So we're going to get those answers. Shen Mei reveals that the sick person is Gen C and that he is her younger brother. Her brother had been infected and she blames the US. She reiterates Jason's story as we flash back to the Mad Dogs and we see an order was given to drop bombs even though the Mad Dogs were there. Fair enough. Shen Mei heard the Mad Dogs' transmission and the injured and infected man they rescued was Gen C. So that's that link. Yep. Cleared up. He turned when he brought him back to base which is where Shen Mei comes in as the Mad Dogs talk about what happened to him. She sees the corpse of her brother opening the body bag to reveal his zombified state. That's a lot of information. It is, yeah. It's a lot of information for what is a very flimsy reason for Shen Mei to be involved. Uh, <coughs> Me yeah. personally, yeah. I mean, obviously it's four episodes and it's 25 minutes along. Yeah. So they did well get a lot in in a short time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, this, this this part does drag on a bit. It, it, I won't say it's pointless because obviously they need to, they need to explain it. Yeah. Because obviously they got a tie in the first two episodes, but. I, mean, um, I would argue it is completely pointless because of what happens in the last episode. Yeah. We'll get to it. Back in the room, though, she continues to tell Leon that Gen C was under the command of the Defence Secretary Wilson, who was also working with Umbrella, because of course he fucking was. But Amstam was a testing ground and the soldiers were the test subjects. This is one of those where you kind of have to just go, okay. Because my first thought was, well, how? How were they test subjects? Mm -hmm. What do you mean they were test subjects? Did they volunteer? Were they, yeah. were they, were, were they unaware test, test subjects? Mm. Was the government aware? How were you able to do this? What were you testing? Do you know what I mean? Yep. It's just a bit like, it's a bit like Umbrella going, oh yeah, we're going to create uh, bioweapons, but we're just going to make them really monstrous and violent and, yeah. uh, and uncontrollable. Like, what are you doing? Mm. Back with Claire, she's not sure how to progress, but looks through some of the Dead Man's documents and letters. The Mad Dogs were able, apparently, to speak with Gen C before he died. Before they could move out, though, they were then attacked by zombies of the local people, which is the B.O.W. attack I mentioned earlier. They were able to fight them off. All of the Blanks' stories slowly being filled in at this stage. 
Genesee tells Jason who did get get bitten in this scene. I wasn't sure at first. I know someone got bitten, but I couldn't tell yeah. who the fuck it was. One got bitten, I think one got bitten in the leg. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, actually, I think they all got bitten. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, it's very dark. It's very hard to that's see. Why they, uh, that's why they, 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 they started killing themselves, because they, they knew they were, they were, they were going to... Because yeah. of the... Uh, having yeah. the cause they have the to, yeah. Uh, basically, Genesee has an, something called an inhi- inhi- inhibitor on him, and that you use it to stop you turning into a zombie. That's what you do, and you have to take him regularly to stop you. Basically, it's Zombrex. Yeah. They're ripping off Zombrex yeah, here. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Which really fucking annoys me. I'm like, you were seriously going to rip off Dead Rising, guys? Claire has called the police to report the body. As it's a suicide, she's let go. Jason tells a squad that they won't be telling HQ about Gen C. And then Shen Mei's grandfather later brought him to China. It's like, sure, how? How again? What do you mean? So you didn't tell him about HQ about the body. But how did the body get moved? For customs or not, yeah, yeah. Well, no, let's say, right, Gen C, Gen, Shen, Shen Mei's grandfather has connections. Mm. So all of that is like all done black market style. Yeah. How did out of the base? That like, Stuff like that is what annoys me. Uh, the Mad Dogs were then forced to work as Wilson's private military force uh, to keep being supplied with the medication to stop their infection from taking over yep. their bodies. Okay, fine. Other, other thing too, actually, uh, this, this, uh, Jen Su, he obviously knew about the virus. Then, yes. Because he, he had to cure them. Yep. So why, why didn't he tell his sister? Or uh, did she know about too? Or, 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 I mean, it's... There's a lot of, there's it's, a lot it's of picking, stuff. It's, it's picking that out to you and... But it's, it's worth picking at it because it shouldn't just get a pass for it. Do you be like, uh, why didn't Gen C, uh, why do you give the inhibitor to the Mad Dogs? Yeah. Why did he use them on himself? He wasn't a zombie then. True. Also, he only had two. There was more than two Mad Dogs. Where did the rest come from? True. But that's where we're at now. Shen may work together with Jason to expose Wilson. Leon believes her and thinks that Wilson is responsible for the White House hack and incident. So Wilson's just to blame for everything because yep. it's always a, it's always that type of person. Always, isn't it? Yeah, it's always, always the one, yeah. Shemay's grandfather was trying to find a cure for Gen C, but he's not even human anymore. No. I did like the look of him. He looked quite nasty. Yeah, definitely. Leon knows that as well. But it turns out they have proof now. A chip that was implanted in Gen C, which apparently records data after he was infected as a B.O.W., but also it includes who was responsible for creating it, which was what, that was it. I was just like, that's fucking dumb. Yep. That is dumb as fuck. I know, it is. It is. Bodies can be blown apart, those chips can be found, and you're going to what, put your signature on it? Yep. Why would you do that? It's dumb as yeah, fuck. It, 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 it is a dumb, dumb plot. Home. It's so dumb. Uh, but the house is then bombed, and Shen Mei's grandfather and brother are killed in this scene. With Le- Leon and Shen Mei escaping with the evidence. Because of course they escape. Of course, yeah. yeah. So what about all the attempts to blame it on China? This is part of the plan. As the president has now decided to take a firm stand on the country. And including like, also like teaming up with Peman Stam to try and help them and just be mean to China. <laughs> a Claire arrives at the White House and confronts Wilson about the Mad Dogs. And he blows her off initially before we then le- later see her being grabbed by his men. And that's episode three yep. done. Again, Claire, how has she got access to the White House? I don't understand. She must have connections. Must... She doesn't. Who? She's just an aid worker. She's not important. No idea. I, I mean, obviously, her brother's quite, quite, quite... The brother's nothing to do with this at this stage. I, Come well, on, I'm man. Saying he, he, he's quite well connected too, so, so maybe there's... I don't know. You, you, do, you do that thing where you like to reach when there's nothing <laughs> to imply that. Chris's name isn't even said in this True. series. Last episode. In the Oval Office, the president is ready to give his address, giving basically shit to China and joining a peace accord with Penan Stan. Claire wakes up in a lab while Wilson is waiting because now it's proper full-on risen and evil stuff. We're in a fucking lab. <laughs> and I was like, you're joking, get, um, game. Show. He wants to cut a deal with Claire. What? Drop her investigation and he will help her with her aid projects in Penan Stan. What? I did. Uh, uh, just kill her. Yeah, did, did, did this part I did find stupid. It's like, it was like you're trying to pay her off. Just kill her. I mean, yeah. If, if he knows who she is and what she's been through and all that, she ain't gonna drop it. But not even that. Mm. Even if you don't know who the fuck she is, just, well, just yeah, kill her. Just kill her yeah. This makes no fucking sense. Mm-hmm. Wilson then what? Obviously, it's time for the evil villain's plan because that's what he does. Drop the story. Also, here's the story. 
Here's the stuff. Every film, every film or TV series always has the villain who reveals his plans. Oh man, not these days. People are smarter yeah. with writing than that. Wilson wants to create super soldiers by introducing BOWs into Panam Stan and then sell the inhibit inhibitor to countries who want them. It's basically about money. Yeah. And I'll be honest, man. Like I thought it was alright at this point. This was just like, oh, come on, man. This is stupid. Was it? I didn't like it. Claire's having none of it, but then Jason arrives. Somehow. I'm like, okay, how did he get here? Well, the, How did he get here from Shanghai? Well, obviously, we, we don't know how long it's been since that, that, that period. So we, we presume it's been a couple of days. I'm presuming it's been a day. Okay, okay, the well, night before was the, her at the house. And obviously, he's obviously... In Time the, zones? China to America? 24 hours probably plus. No, no. How did he get there? Private hospital. He got... Shot like he's, he's going around with a bullet hole in him. Oh. You're doing it again. You're doing a thing. Tell tell us, Damon, where in Esty Perry's book is this? <laughs> <laughs> Leon and Shen Mei are en route. Shen Mei haven't been told where to go by Jason, and I was just like, "That's fucking convenient, isn't it?" Yeah. Thank God he dropped that bit of knowledge in. Jason attacks Wilson, destroying his inhib- inhibitor and fully transforming it into a BOW, where he then bites Wilson on the neck. So Jason's now a big old tyrant-esque monster yeah a fucking chatty one a chatty one man leon and shen may arrive inside the building as alarms begin to sound and i was like don't you dare do self-destruct but it's not quite that uh but it is still pretty wacky as the lab begins to flood with acid mm. acid yeah a bit, of a, bit, bit of a strange one that is i mean i i know it's obviously designed to destroy itself but still yeah but acid, acid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason lets Wilson go, having infected him, as Leon and Shen Mei arrive behind him. Basically, Jason's plan is to expose himself to the world above to show what Wilson has done and to create fear. Shen Mei tries to tell him that she is the evidence and can expose the truth, but Jason is all insistent about causing fear. Here's the problem. That interesting conversation has now turned into a villain's, a villain's plan. I will go up there and I will show them fear. Is for me, that, that it? For me, that uh, is mind's turning. Okay. The, the, the talking side is, is his good side. Still, still, because he, he, he hasn't fully turned into the, the I don't know, the creature yet or, or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, so maybe he, he's taking obviously he's taking this zombie virus or, or serum, whatever you call it, and obviously I, I don't know, maybe it's preserved his brain and I don't know. <laughs> His mind is <laughs> okay. I, 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 I know I'm, I'm clutching at straws, but big time. Uh, Claire's in trouble as the acid begins to reach her. Leon ends up shooting Jason, though, to stop him, resulting in them having to fight him. Thankfully, Jason, although it doesn't come into it, I didn't notice this. Jason has a big glowing red spot on his chest, and I laughed my head off. I was like, There's the end. Yeah. It actually doesn't really come into play. No, it doesn't. Claire manages to get herself free as the acid rises around her. Shen Mei tries to talk Jason back and then he kills her. Yeah. And I was like, oh. So that's her story completely fucking pointless then. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a bit of a premature death. Well, it's just unnecessary, yeah. right? Like, okay, why could she not perhaps, one, helped Leon, done all that thing they normally would, a partner, and then like she's like, oh no, you know what, at the end as well, like realises that individuals get corrupted, not necessarily... You know, and stuff like that. Could have been a story there. I but mean, it's just dead. For me, that, 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 that's telling the audience, okay, that, now, now he's fully turned. You reckon? Yeah, yeah because nope. he, he, he's fully gone, I don't know, dark side, to call it. No, because he won't shut up. Yeah, well, and continues to talk about fear. And even when he's like half a body. Hey, he, 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 even when Ian Birkin doesn't shut up at number two, he's calling out Sherry. <laughs> 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 Leon then hears Claire call of her help and manages to rescue her. Together they take down Jason as above, the peace accord is made with Penanstan, and the president prepares to make his speech about China. Before he can make it though, the other agent tells him what Leon had told him, Leon had called him earlier on, yep. and the president changes his speech on the fly, basically into one that's a bit more hopeful and less anti-China. That's all sad, that, 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 that Leon looks so much better in his, in his leather gear than he does in his trip to suit. Okay. Yeah. Jason continues his ascent as Leon and Claire chase him down. Claire tries to use a crane to lower Jason while Leon grabs a rocket launcher and shoots it into the rising acid. Jason is able to escape though and climb up the hook 
The battle continues with Jason working his way up. Leon does manage to blow up one of, the, one of his arms, which he did like, yep. but is grabbed by Jason and held of the acid. For going to the dark side, Jason then talks about fear again and lets Leon live, dropping him to the floor. Yeah. Because uh, I, 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 still, I still think his, his mind is... You torn. said he turned completely. Well, no, he, 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 he's, got, he's, got, he's got the virus in him, so obviously his mind is... Like, it's, it's, it's there and then it's gone. You are really, really trying to get something out of this like instead it, of just it, seeing it as bad writing. It, it was a good TV show. I, I like it. <laughs> Leon gets up and drops the platform there on into the acid, which seemingly kills Jason. But Leon is able to grab the hook before falling. The president finishes a speech and doesn't mention China once, so happy days. Leon reflects on what Jason did, but he's still alive, sort of. Mm. Uh, he's kind of like half a body on a spike. Yeah, it's a it's a good look. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Jason tells him that it won't end and that Leon will help fear spread. And I did admit I was a bit like he's not wrong. Yeah, considering the events that would follow. Jason then finally dies. Yay! Well, I, I mean, effectively, although obviously Jason. And Lei Le Ming were obviously good slash bad, really. Lei Ming? But, uh, Shen Mei. Sorry, sorry, uh, Lei Ming? <laughs> Shen Mei, sorry. Um, good slash bad, bad. But Leon effectively has covered it up, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah. He, he basically done what, Umbrella, what, what Wesker does. Well, we're going to get to that yes, even yeah. more so in the last few scenes. Because yes. Leon, doesn't feel mu- Leon doesn't feel much like a hero afterwards. And we see the president leaving Air Force One as Leon looks on. We then see that Wilson is still alive. He's in a room somewhere being given an inhibitor where we see the name of the box is Tricell, which is a link towards Resident Evil 5. Leon and Claire meet back up. Leon decides to not unleash the truth about Wilson's plot. They do not agree on this and part ways under a cloud, so they leave very angry with each other. Yeah. And he swears to stop the usage of B.O.W.'s going forward. How did that go for you, mate? Yeah, I mean, that, that ending confused me, confused me a lot. Yeah. Because it's... He acts like Claire's his enemy. Yep. You know, it's like you two are like are, are good friends, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So why wouldn't you give her a claim? Why wouldn't you give her the whole thing? Why would you want to cover it? I don't. I never didn't see it like that, though. I think I saw it like this: there could be no good to reveal that information to the world. By revealing that information, all he would do is scare people. It doesn't change the fact the person in question, responsible, is gone. As far as Leon's concerned, he's dead. What are you going to do? What are you actually going to do? True. The joke is, it won't matter anyway, because by Resident Evil 6, the entire thing is exposed. It's a worldwide thing. Part of it takes place in fucking China, for goodness sake. So none of that really matters. B.O.W. has become a known threat in the Resident Evil world. So it doesn't really fucking matter. Which really, really, really left a sour taste in my mouth. Because I realised how pointless this series was. The messages and lessons it's trying to tell you... By putting it in a specific part of the game canon, mm. what did you do? Make the ending and parts of it pointless. Well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose, yeah. What lessons are learned? What do we learn uh, from this? I don't know. Just, it, it, I suppose it fills in a few gaps. It wouldn't have minded it. Does it, though? D- d- what gaps? Well, I mean, it, 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 it adds, it adds more, more questions, sorry, and it fills in a, a few little gaps. But for me, it was too short. I, I, I think that they put too much information... In four episodes. Yeah. I think it could have been maybe six episodes. I mean, openly, what it is, is a f- it, it's close to a feature-length film. Yeah, yeah. And we've had those before. Yeah. So, I don't even necessarily think like that's such a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. I do agree with you. I think there's too much going on. You've got way too much information going yeah. on where you're like, here's this novel plot, here's by BOWs, here's Resident Evil stuff, mm-hmm. but here's also the stuff about governments yeah, and yeah. China and America and peace accords and dodgy dealings behind... You know what I mean? It's all like, whoa... Whoa, well, guys, yep. calm the fuck down. Why are you doing so much? That kind of thing. I mean, they've obviously they left it on a cliffhanger. So, well, I, well, I say I say they did, but I mean, from what I've read, uh, I've, this, is, this is only down to Google, by the yep. way, that the Netflix has no plans to make another season. Yep. The guy who made it has no plans to make another season. That's right. Yeah. It was only it was only maybe four episodes. Yep. And that was it. Yeah. That's but it. But if, if, if it makes money, money talks. Yeah, but but it, it has it, it clearly hasn't. Well, because it was July last year. This came out last year. Was that? Yep. July 2021. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, I thought it was quite, quite recent. But... Nope, so it's already been a while. And it's not, you know, and bear in mind, like we said at the very start, the buzz around Resident Evil has turned to shit. Mm. Why are you going to bother now? Who's going to be excited? Who, like, that poor show, the one about Wesker and his daughters, 
is in a real trouble now before it's even fucking got started. Mm. Because already everyone's got a negative view on it. Of course. So how the fuck are you going to recover from that? I don't know. I don't hate it. Here's the thing. I think the CG is often really good. Normally best when it's quite dark. Mm. I know it's when it was quite light. That's when it looked a bit crap. Yeah. But when it's dark, it looks really, really good. The voice acting. It's great. Yeah. It's great to see people returning to do these roles. More than happy with that. More than that. Overall, I don't think the story is terrible. I think it's got too many holes in it. And his introduction of this Chasen character and Shen Mei. That one there, Shen Mei, felt like such a waste of time. I felt like, what was the point of me getting invested about her and her brother when none of them fucking come out of it life? Isn't that sort of like just bloody like introducing Sheva, sort of? Because Sheva was pointless. But Sheva lived. But, yeah, but then she, then she currently has not, has not returned. No, but could. Uh, could. Yeah. Eventually she probably will, no doubt. Yeah, I'll in mean, some sure, way. Sure I suppose you got to kill Shen Mei and stuff like that because you can't obviously have her, um, what's it call it, in... She's not in the game, isn't it? Yeah, true. She's not, yeah. Not the game. And that obviously makes Jason have to be more of a villain. Yep. So. You got any thoughts on Infinite Darkness? You know what to do. Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?